In this example, we look at the assets for share transactions per section 42. Now, as a reminder, um, let me actually start reading the question and we'll talk about it. So it says, Mr. X disposes of a manufacturing machine with a market value of a million rands to receive shares in DPTOI Limited that are worth a million rands. So I want you to see, the market value is a million, the shares are worth a million. So that means there is no Section 24BA application here. This is what I expect you to see more often if you do see this. The machine had originally cost Mr. X 800,000 rands and the tax value at the time of the disposal was 200,000 rands. Mr. X had used this in the production of income and DP2I Limited will also use it as a manufacturing machine. Okay, so Mr. X gives an asset to DP2I Limited. And you'll see now DP2I Limited will give shares. All right. Now, when does Section 42 apply here? It first of all applies if the market value of the asset exceeds the base cost. Now, the tax value in the base cost is the same thing, 200,000, market value is a million. So that applies. Okay, so that's fine. It then applies if Mr. X holds a qualifying interest or engaged full-time in the business. This qualifying interest means after all of these transactions have taken place, there's a 10% amount of right, shareholding. So let's see. So they say, what are the tax consequences for Mr. X if Mr. X received 6% of the shares in DP2Y Limited? If Mr. X received 6% of the shares in DP2Y Limited, it means now he has, still has less than 10%. So section 42, this section will not apply. So this means it is the normal transaction that you will follow. So let's go through it. Cost was 800,000. Tax value is 200,000. So it means our balancing figure is the capital balance of 600. Selling price, limited to original cost. You want to use a million here, but the original cost is 800,000. So you make a recoupment. You then do the capital gain, a million minus 600,000 recoupment. And we calculate our base cost. So what I want you to see is there's a 600,000 recoupment and a 200,000 rands capital gain. B. What happens if Mr. X received 10% of the shares in DP2I Limited? Then it means this requirements are met. So Section 42 will apply. What happens if Section 42 applies? Simple. Mr. X should not have a taxable income. So I want you to see. Same calculation. But see here. Here's the difference. This selling price is now treated as if it's the base cost. So whatever that base cost was, the tax value, that is your selling price. So there's a null recoupment. The proceeds is the same as the base cost. Base cost is 200, so the proceeds is treated as if it's 200. So there's no capital gain. So compare A and B with each other here, guys. Can you see? Null capital gain, no, nothing for Mr. X in this case. Mr. X received 6% of the shares in DP2 Limited and will also be a full-time employee. So yes, he has less than 10%, but he's now also engaged on a full-time basis. So the same principle will apply as in B. So nothing, nothing gets calculated. So again, guys, selling price is equal to the base cost. Proceeds, selling price equal to the base cost. And then D, Mr. X received 10% of the shares. However, the machine is trading stock for Mr. X that cost 800,000 rands and had a market value of a million rands when it was transferred to D. DP to I Limited will also use it as trading stock. Okay, so what would happen then? So this is just to show you what happens if it's trading stock, the easier one. D, right? So Mr. X has opening stock deduction of 800,000. If section 42 applies, which it does, this amount, the deemed disposal, is also just equal to the opening stock. So can you see? Null effect. So what are the effects for the company, guys? In D, the company will be treated as if they now have an 800,000 rand stock deduction. And for B and C, where there was nothing, the company will be treated as if it purchased an asset and that this asset is the same. So it will have a 200,000 rand cost remaining. And you can claim the capital allowances in the same way that the previous taxpayer did, so until it's written off. Here you can see this looks like it's been basically um, being written off 
equally over an equal period of time, and that's basically where it comes from. Right, so very, very simple. In this next example, we are going to look at section 24BA when that applies. Now, guys, I've never seen this tested or examined before. This is the only example I created, uh, or this is the only example that I've seen, uh, which is the one that I have to create myself. You can't look at this section if you don't know section 24BA. Remember, section 24BA applies if, the va if you, uh, there's an, an asset given for shares and the market values are different. So, Mr. X disposes of a manufacturing machine of a market value of a million rands to receive shares that are worth 850,000 rands of the transaction. Now, that means that Section 24BA will have to apply. The machine originally cost Mr. X 800,000 and the tax value was 200,000 and um, he used it in production of income and DP to our limited will also use it as a manufacturing machine. I then ask you two questions. What are the tax consequences for Mr. X if... You receive 6% of the shares, and if you receive 10% of the shares. Now, if you receive 10% of the shares, section 42 will apply because he has a qualifying interest afterwards. If you receive 6% of the shares, they will not apply. Now, let's take a look. So in A, in this case, no qualifying interest, section 42 will not apply. So our disposal, he is treated as if he sold the asset for... Eight hundred and fifty thousand rands, which is the market value of the shares received. Okay, so market value the asset was eight hundred thousand. So we limit the original the selling price to the original cost. Calculate the recoupment as usual. Proceeds, please note the eight hundred and fifty thousand rands is what is treated as minus the recoupment. Everything as normal. Okay. So the company is treated as if they have a capital gain of 150,000 rands. That is the difference between a million rands and 850,000 rands. Remember, that is what Section 24BA tells us. It tells you that the company will be treated, if the asset is worth more than the value of the shares, the company is treated as if they had a capital gain of 150,000 rands. If it's the other way around, if the market value of the asset is less than the market value of the shares, the company is treated as if they had a dividend in specie. Right, you'll remember that from section 24BA. In B, they are, Mr. X now has a qualifying interest, and what happens if the corporate rules apply? It means we are treated as if we sold it for the same value as the base cost. So if the tax value is 200,000, remember that's the same as the base cost, then the selling price is treated as if it's the same, so there's no recoupment. If the base cost is 200,000, the proceeds is 200,000, so there's no capital gain. Okay, so that's just an application of section 24BA to show you what would happen in that case. Mr. X is treated as if he paid 200,000 rands for the shares. That excess must be set off against the cost of the shares. Right, so he's treated as if he spent 50,000 rands. If I take you back to A, Mr. X here is treated as if he paid... 850,000 rands for the shares, the excess of 150,000 rands must be set off against it so that the total cost for Mr. X for the shares is 600,000 rands. That is just a reminder for you of what section 24BA tells us. Right guys, that's it.